Should Manchester United fans, even before the season started, be concerned? Uh, a disappointing pre-season it may be, but it's only mm. a pre-season. Yeah, exa- exactly, Dan. And um, they had their chances last night. Mason Mann had a couple of good chances. Rashford had one. Um, probably shouldn't have gone behind so quickly in the game and gone in at half-time probably level. Um, Liverpool's Curtis Jones, who's playing a little bit more of an attack-minded role, which is good for him because he loves that. Um, Carvalho, Fabio Carvalho, who's come into the team and done pretty well in recent weeks. But Liverpool have a much more settled squad, in my opinion, than Manchester United. There's, all, there's a lot of talk about various parts of Manchester United team, but I think until they can decide who is going to be their midfield three, this is all, you know, Mason Mount has... Well, Casemiro a made a mistake early on in the game. Casemiro... Looks in the Premier League, a player past his best. Yep, they don't. They don't trust McTominay one hundred percent. I think he's no. a really good player, but um, they can't decide whether he just wants to be a forward-going midfielder or a holding midfielder. Um, you know, well, their midfield is Ericsson, who's you know been an incredible footballer for Tottenham, for Denmark, yep. and you know, and he's done well at Brentford, and he's he's at a certain stage of his career. You could put that case with Casemiro that he's past his very best. I would say Ericsson's probably that as well, but still fine footballers. Mainu is the international young lad who's come into the team. Fernandez is a bit more of an attacking role. McTominay's not quite. It doesn't feel like he's the, the, the perfect fit for United. Who, who holds the Manchester United midfield? Because Mainu, they've tried to use him as that, but he's a forward. He, he no. wants to go forward, doesn't he? He's a great no. player. Well, they had problems last year. If you remember, Amrabat came in, you know, because they were lacking numbers in that area of the pitch. I'd still make the case that they need a, a midfielder that can control the game. And not just for his passing, because Ericsson can do it when he's got the ball, but he isn't good enough like Rodri to get when he gets the ball. So it's a it's a void in their midfield for me. Yeah, they 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 they, they need to look at that. Um, listen, let's move on to Liverpool now, with only one game left in the preseason. Um, Anna Slot has won all his games, um, just conceding the one, uh, doing it without many of Liverpool's key players. Of course, we're away mm-hmm. in the Euros and the Copa. Um, speaking after the game, Slot reflects on Liverpool's preseason. And their upcoming preparations for the match against Ipswich. A very positive, I think. Um, of course, the results—that's where everybody is looking at. But players stay stay fit, and they are um, they are able to perform in the way we want. So high intensity game. Uh, we saw some great goals during this tour, some great build-up situations, and I see them working, working really, really hard, not to concede and. Um, we need to work hard in the upcoming two weeks to be ready to, uh, for Ipswich because there are a lot of positives to take from today. There's massive support and I can't wait to, uh, to hear the support at Anfield. Do you know one big thing, Dan, that stood out for me so far in Liverpool's games? How sharp Mo Salah looks. He's not the Mo Salah that was injured in the African nations, came back, didn't get going towards the end of the season. Yeah, he was two foot off, off, the, off his pace, off his he, pace. Yeah. Mo Salah looks really sharp and I hope that starts for the you know going into the season because when Mo is sharp he's a real handful Slight as a new manager I mean I know the problem he has we've seen post Klopp we've seen how other legendary managers when they've gone um, Alex Ferguson Manchester United Wenger at Arsenal to give you two examples how difficult it is for the next person um, off the rank to mm. just pick up the reins where they were um Liverpool had more chance to get ready for this because we knew he was going uh, and all the rest of it. They haven't pulled the trigger in the, in the transfer market yet. We know they're interested mm. in Mark Gay and others. Um, Liverpool fans, should they be excited about, about Slot's first season there? Yeah, I, I am. I'm a Liverpool fan, Dan, so I mm-hmm. am. Because I think he's already done the, the one major issue need, as a challenge when you walk into a club is convince the players that you're right and you know what you're doing. And I think it's quite clear by the way they play, they have an identity that's slightly different from Klopp's, but the players are already... And I know Curtis Jones has spoke out about that, you know, because... By different, different, I think you mean that they've gone from being a sort of monstrous oh, pressing team pressing to a bit, more, relentless. bit more possession-based. A little bit more... But they don't come away from that. I mean, it's important no. they keep that attacking, pressing style, but it isn't so relentless as Klopp's. And... I feel like the players have already... If you've watched the games, which you wouldn't have done because no, you, no. you'd have been watching Tottenham in pre-season. If you watch the Liverpool game so far, that you can see that there is an identity by the way they do it and they're all they're all buying into it very quickly. And I'm sure a number of them are trying to impress. But having Mo Salah back to looking like Mo Salah is a big thing for me because 
the end of last season, Mo was so off it, he didn't even look like he deserved a place in the team. So let's say Salah is is the right-sided forward in a three mm. um, and you've got a Champions League semi-final coming up to... Uh, who are the other two playing up front with him? Well, I, I, I still think Yota's a big player for Liverpool. I, I, I'd rather have him as centre-forward than Nunes. I think he's way more clinical. He leads the line brilliantly. He's effective in the air. He's a much better finisher. I think Diaz is another aim, handful on the left. I think Liverpool have options. In Diaz the was brilliant with Copa America, Harvey Elliott way. was tremendous for me at the end of last season. And Harvey Elliott, I'm sure. And Carvalho coming back into the fold and looking good in the pre-season friendly games. OK, he might not start. But Liverpool have got a lot of younger players. He's taking over. United, when the, everyone looks at the ex-manager of Manchester United, Sir Alex, is that when he he left, United didn't have the youngsters and the, the no. nowhere near as what Liverpool. No, no, have got. It's a mess of a squad. Whereas yeah. Liverpool, you could argue, still great players there, of course. But but, but, but you could argue, it is it is arguable that Liverpool are in a better position? Oh, absolutely, yeah. way, better. It, way it, better. it is. Um, where what what are realistic aims for? I mean. Liverpool will say they'll, they'll want to win the title, but what's top three re- most definitely? I don't. I won't go down to four, but no. I think they they matched Man City and Arsenal for long periods last season. Um, obviously, they didn't get over the line. Arsenal proved they were better, and likewise City. I think Liverpool are close to that. I think they're going to be a top three team again. Um, and I'm excited with some sometimes new voices and new people coming in, and everyone with Klopp was brilliant for Liverpool, but I did think that. The, one of the reasons why he left the football club is because he knew they had to move on to a different way. OK, listen, uh, but interesting that, uh, that the, these two huge clubs... I, I take your point. I think Liverpool, Arsenal and Manchester City will probably finish yeah. one, two, three again. We shall see. Um, now, uh, for those of you who have been listening all morning, we've been asking um, for your impressions of Louis Armstrong. It's his birthday today. Uh, the great Louis Armstrong, but I'm, te- I'm doing both of his names. He called himself Louis, to be fair, but we tend to know him as Louis. We ask for you, send in your impressions of his unique voice. This is a selection of some of the best. And I bring to Matthew what a wonderful world. Yes, I think to myself, what a wonderful world. Oh, <laughs> That's fantastic. Yeah, thank you. To, you know, I won't say the torrents of you. We're not one of those radio shows that lies. <laughs> Um, but there were several of you who had a, a crack at that, and it took both courage and the destruction of your own larynx, um, which uh, we're, we're grateful for. When you go to work tomorrow morning, and you say, you'll say, hello, guys, uh, hello, girls. Uh, people will understand that you've been doing something special, i.e. entertaining us here on Talk Sport. Um, we'll be going over live for some athletics in just a few seconds' time. So the great mystery, Tony, is who's replacing me here next weekend. I don't know. Because ain't <laughs> Natalie. Um, have you enjoyed the four yes. shows we've done together? Well, we've had great fun, Dan, and I've been really enjoyed the privilege of sitting alongside you talking about sports that I've learnt a lot over the last few days and uh, been great fun. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.